Hello, boys and girls. I am Bob Whitey, and this is Trailers from Hell. Uh, elsewhere on the Trailers from Hell website, I've recorded a spot for the 1930 Marx Brothers film Animal Crackers, in which I profess my deep-seated, obsessive love for the boys. Well, the front office here at Trailers from Hell is allowing me the indulgence of doing a second Marx Brothers film, A Day at the Races, from 1937. Uh, although only seven years separate these films, they're very different types of movies because audiences' tastes had changed during that time. And while their earlier films for Paramount were pure anarchy, when they came to MGM in 1935, Irving Thalberg, the boy wonder producer, envisioned a different kind of Marx Brothers film for MGM. They would be more plot-oriented, with the Marx's lunacy serving in the cause of helping out a young couple, usually in financial straits, to give audiences something to root for. And of course, room was always made for lavish MGM musical numbers. So you might say he slowed their films down a bit, but it kind of worked at the time. Uh, a Night at the Opera, a pretty great film, became their most successful picture to date. So the formula was repeated two years later with A Day of the Races, which is not a great picture, but a pretty good one. Uh, sadly, Thalberg died halfway through production at the age of 37, and the pictures following races would start to go downhill, although all would have a great moment or two and at least a, a few scenes to recommend them. Uh, but before we get ahead of ourselves, let's look at A Day at the Races, shall we? Where is it? Oh, there it is. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. During the next presentation, may I request your absolute silence, for I have a message of great importance for everyone in the audience. Now remember, please, absolute quiet. Yeah, this trailer's opening is a bit strange and has nothing to do with the film. <laughs> the Marx Brothers were not pie-throwing comedians, so let's move on. Groucho was very fond of his character in this film. Dr. Hugo Z. Hackenbush, a horse doctor installed as chief of staff of a sanitarium run by Maureen O'Sullivan, whose singing boyfriend is played by Alan Jones. Uh, the Marxes try to help save the struggling sanitarium by getting a cash infusion from a wealthy hypochondriac played by the great Margaret Dumont the fifth Marx brother, all the while staving off the evil financial managers. But this is a Marx Brothers movie. Why are we even talking about the plot? I'm not even going to tell you why Alan Jones owns a racehorse. I'm not even certain I know. Just go with it. All right, here's what you need to know. There's solid laughs in this movie and some really fun set pieces. There's Groucho trying to seduce Esther Muir in his room while Chico and Harpo do everything they can to break it up. There's the scene where Groucho examines Harpo, the scene where all three brothers examine Margaret Dumont. There's Groucho driving Mr. Whitmore crazy with his Florida call. But the best sequence is the Tootsie Fritzy ice cream scene in which Chico cons Groucho out of a few bucks by selling him a bad tip on a racehorse. This scene brings on applause when you see it with a live audience. The timing is perfect, due in part to it being honed in front of live theater audiences, vaudeville style, a method used to perfect several routines in their first few MGM films. Of course, there's Chico's piano number and Harpo's harp solo, all these highlights, but this is an MGM film, so you'll have to put up with a couple of lavish but boring musical numbers. Having seen this film countless times, I, I usually hit the fast forward button through these. There's a lively black ensemble number, All God's Chillin' Got Rhythm, which may make some contemporary audiences squirm a bit, but I'm fine with it until the end when the Marx Brothers unfortunately don blackface to escape the sheriff. That's a difficult watch today, but it's 1937, folks, so we'll cut them some slack. I should mention the writers, George Seaton and Robert Pyrosh, director Sam Wood, whom Groucho found really annoying, directed both opera and races. So what doesn't work about this film? Well, mainly the ending. The format from opera is repeated for the final scenes where the bad guys are closing in on the Marxes. But in opera, the gags and the climax are actually funny. Here, the gags surrounding the final horse race are just belabored and don't really inspire many laughs. But at the end of the day, the good definitely outweighs the mundane, so A Day at the Races still belongs squarely on your must-see list if you're a fan of classic screen comedy.